County, Nova Scotia. I grew up in a family home, which is 180 years old. Um, this family home, well, it's been in the family for so long. And about 80 years ago, my great-grandfather had installed a septic system. And this is where, when you flush the toilet, everything goes into your septic system. We don't have a city system. It's personal for the home and ours had collapsed. So I was in grade six at the time, so I would have been 11 years old. And this was around the same time that I needed a science fair project. So we were talking about a science fair project and at the dinner table that evening, my mom was mentioning that our septic bed had collapsed and we didn't know what we were going to do. And she mentioned that we had been told by the engineer we had three months to fix it when our neighbors had straight pipes and they didn't have three months to fix their straight pipe. And I said, well, what's a straight pipe? And mom said, well, it's a, it's a pipe from a toilet directly into, into our river. And it's whatever you put in the toilets going right in our river. And as an 11 year old, I had so many questions. Um, I wanted all the answers and mom really didn't have them for me. So she got in contact with a local organization called Coastal Action. And they led me to an uh, older gentleman down the road, Dr. David Maxwell, who became my mentor for um, a science fair project for school. So we met for over tea just to <laughs> have some of my questions answered. And he said, well, you can actually, you can do the testing yourself right in your kitchen and I can overlook it. And I thought that was so cool. I could do, do some real science in my, in my kitchen. We could grow we grew fecal bacteria in my basement to, to assess the levels of the river and it was it was an amazing project and it, we did it just as a grade six science fair project it wasn't meant to be anything more than that um, but when we saw the results we were i was appalled i was so upset that the river was we weren't the water levels were so bad you shouldn't even have water in contact with your skin in our town. It was so alarming and none of the adults were talking about it. And this is when I wanted my mom to pull the car over when we saw people in the river. It was, I was so upset. And I wanted to, I wanted to tell everybody in the community. I wanted to say, hey, don't go in the water. You can get really sick. Um, it's not safe. But I wanted a Facebook page and mom said, no, <laughs> you're 11 years old. You cannot have Facebook. Uh, so we compromised and we made, got a big sign made that said this river is contaminated with fecal bacteria. And that was meant to just kind of ease my mind to, you know, let the people in the community know that, you know, there's an issue here and then the adults would take over. But it turned into the media at my door asking me, well, what would you do? And my go-to, what I would tell the adults is, I'm just here to tell you there's a problem and the adults can <laughs> take it into their hands to fix it but I became someone who advocated for change. I didn't let any authorities or anybody kind of talk about the project and leave it behind. I made sure that the adults stuck to their word and that they, they figured out a plan to clean up my river because I just wanted a safe, a safe environment for everybody. Um, at, after all the media attention, mom agreed that we could have a shared Facebook page that she would oversee and it it went viral it went worldwide i had people from anywhere and everywhere contacting me saying keep going and advocate and i at the time i don't think i even realized how big that was i was just like oh someone in someone in australia said good job like, i just thought that was really cool but now when i look back that's incredible <laughs> Um, there's now a $15.7 million cleanup plan that is coming to close hopefully this year. Um, it's been a uh, it's been a long journey for sure, but we're hoping that our river is it's getting the help. All of the illegal straight pipes are being replaced um, with septic systems. Uh, it was it was a big accomplishment to have all three levels of government come together, and that's another thing I never ever would have really realized when I was little is that you know, that's not something that is commonly, doesn't commonly happen to have all three levels of government within a year and a half, two years, come together, make a plan and approve the plan. It was, it was incredible when I look back for sure. Yeah, so for the most part, I had very, very positive 
uh, a very positive experience with with my advocacy. Um, I think the only thing that I really had any backlash on was some people in the community who had straight pipes weren't supportive because they didn't fully understand that they were going to be receiving help to replace their illegal straight pipe and that um, there was just some some little things you had to just explain a little further um, and then they were on board. I did have a few people um, saying, well, she's just a kid. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But I had been working with an accredited lab to verify my tests were, were going well in my home. And I also had Dr. David Maxwell who overviewed everything that I did. We made sure that my control was always clear so that my results were, were viable. We, we checked all of our boxes off. So we knew that what I was doing was, was well and we did. We just kind of went with all the positivity and stuck with that. And usually mom would take down any mean comments or anything that was, you know, not the nicest um, before. But if she didn't get to it before, then we'd had other people kind of replying to them saying, what do you mean she's doing great things or kind of supporting me. So I definitely had a lot of support from the community. I think that this, this experience that I've had is very unique. And I think that it's, it's going to help me learn that no matter what other people say, there's always people that will support you. I had some people coming at me saying, well, you're a kid, you don't know what you're doing. My parents would always say, hey, look, this person said, look, you're doing great. Or I had Dr. Maxwell saying, you're doing amazing. Or I had organizations or media and other people saying, we're so happy with what's going on and politicians kind of helping me along. And it was, it was really good to just acknowledge the support and know that there's always gonna be people supporting you. And I know my parents will, They'll support me with whatever I choose to do in the future. <laughs> yeah, um, my classmates supported it. They thought it was cool. I was essentially growing poop in my basement. I mean, as a as an eleven year old, that's really cool. Um, I also had some students. Once I started getting media attention, then it, they kind of stopped talking about it altogether, and it was just kind of like that was science fair project, and they left it at that. Um, yeah, I had no uh, no support from. Uh, from peers we just kind of left it at you know at school I was Stella who who played hockey and I played volleyball and that was that was who I was and then outside of school I was more curious I had more questions uh, I was more into the science project and the advocacy um, we just kind of left it um, just outside of that I did meet my best friend Meg on a trip to Ecuador for uh, we were there to help build a school um, and she was, she's very similar to myself. She's done amazing things advocating and she loves politics as well. So I kind of found somebody who I could connect with and that really made a world of change for me. I definitely, I definitely felt the most upset, I'd say, with not connecting with my peers when I came back from Ecuador, just because I had had an experience that was so incredible with people who were so, like like-minded and they had such passion and drive for success and I got back to junior high and it was it just I felt I had matured in this process um I had my best friend Meg and I still to this day we talk every day um she's a few years older so she had experienced things before me so I always had somebody to turn to I had many phone calls crying saying I, I don't know don't know what to do next and she'd She'd be like, no, girl, it's okay. We'll get through this. And it was, no, I'm very thankful for her. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> oh, my screen's moving. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm a university student. I'm first year at Dalhousie in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, I've been focusing mostly on my schooling right now. Um, I still do a few interviews like this occasionally and I try to stick with stick with my project and I still look into updates for the river and I go home frequently um yeah I just I've just been focusing on school lately sure I've been doing um over the years I've been doing classroom uh, presentations and I even helped uh, train some classrooms to test their own local waterways for fecal bacteria and we made sure that they had a mentor and a teacher to help them out and explain it all. And it was a really cool unit to see students do hands-on science and having fun. Um, yeah, it was really great. I'm Right now I'm studying 
uh, I'm in an arts degree. So I'm hoping to do the social sciences and see where that takes me. It's I'm only first year, so I still have time to to make some choices, but I'm definitely more of a social science and not a science science person. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a people person. I like I like interacting with people and the advocacy part was definitely my favorite part out of my whole project. I definitely enjoyed the science, but but really engaging with the community and coming up with a plan and being part of council meetings and attending all these meetings. And I just thought that was really cool to work with people and see, see where that takes me in life. I had very positive experiences with uh, our politicians. I attended many council meetings. I spoke to many women in politics. I spent the day with Elizabeth May at Parliament. Uh, she gave us a tour and we met up with my member of Parliament and uh, Bernadette Jordan at the time was our member of Parliament and she's been a huge, huge help and such an inspiration to have a strong woman in power. Um, I had many, many women come up to me were politicians saying that it's, I mean, it's, it's a hard field, but it's definitely something to get into and politics are probably in my future as well. <laughs> yeah, so at the beginning, there was an estimated 600 of these illegal strike pipes. So the $15.7 million is towards helping people pay off their septic systems. And it's in a, I always get this part a little, a little mixed up. My mom usually does this for, <laughs> for presentations. It's one third, one third, one third. So a homeowner pays back one third to uh, the municipality. She stole that from my speech. <laughs> I, I always say that without, without meaning to, when we created this Facebook page and I had media attention, I had backed the politicians into a wall unintentionally. Because if you don't respond to an 11 year old, why not? What's she going to do? She's 11. But if you do respond to an 11 year old, you're going to get a bit of backlash from the community who's been advocating for this or trying to have some kind of progress and then say, why did it take an 11 year old kid? So, wow. I mean, without meaning to, I had completely <laughs> disrupted their, their plans. <laughs> but in, in the grand scheme of things, it, it all worked out at the end and everybody is, everybody's happy with the clean river. You can't, can't argue with that. I think just when I was younger, starting with not having that kind of connection with peers and just kind of having two different versions of myself, a way that I can kind of turn off the, the advocacy Stella, um, that really kind of made a difference. I mean, at university now, a couple of my close friends, they've, they've Googled me or they've, they've, they know about what I've done and we've talked about it and they think it's really cool. But for the most part, I don't think many people here even know about it. And I mean, I've I've been living in at university for months now, so it's it's definitely a way that I just kind of I keep it one way or another. It's not top secret. I definitely have like my pictures of me on a red carpet on my Instagram, but nobody ever mentions it. <laughs> yeah, I hope that whatever I end up doing in life is something that I find passion in, or something that I really want to wake up every morning and be be happy for, and be able to share that with the people around me for sure. I definitely recommend having a mentor, somebody who you can bounce your thoughts off of, somebody who can validate your work. Um, Dr. Maxwell was, he was a huge, huge support and help in this, in this whole process. He was, he's been a big part of my life as well over the years and definitely helped shape me as a person. Um, I definitely think that, um, yeah, mentors are a huge part and you can't argue with science when you have, when you have concrete evidence. When I had my my testing cards and my control was clear. I mean, that was that was the answer. That's what it was, and you can't argue with science. So I think that's it's definitely a good good way to look at it. And also just just be strong about it. Um, try to ignore the few people who who may or may not agree with what you're doing or support it fully. Maybe they just don't understand. Um, maybe they're jealous. Jealousy is definitely a big component when somebody's successful. Unfortunately. Uh, I like to end all of my speeches by saying that it doesn't matter if you're 11 or if you're a senior, you can you can use your voice to create change. And uh, social media is also a great way to get your message out. Um, not right now, no. Um, I'm hopeful that somebody, maybe the government, the 
I guess I'm an adult now, but maybe the adults in charge will, will come up with, you know, testing monthly or whatever they choose just to make sure that everything is, is safe for the public. There were no signs anywhere along the river saying that it was unsafe uh, to swim in. The only sign was the sign that I had put up or that my family had put up, which is alarming because you would, you would see people in the river and definitely after after my advocacy and kind of alarming, alerting people, uh, there were there were definitely less people in the water. Um, but just not having the, the adults really step up there was concerning and it, it's unfortunate that it took that it took me as a, a little girl, but at the same time I'm very thankful that I was I was listened to. So Dr. Maxwell, my mentor, he had actually been testing the river before myself and he had been he had been screaming from the rooftop that there's a problem here and nobody was really listening to him until I came along and um, then people started listening to a child and <laughs> we joke about it now that it, that's frustrating for him. Um, just that why wouldn't people listen to him? But I guess it's it's more it's more shameful if you have a little girl telling you that there's something wrong that the adults should have done long before I was even born. <laughs> Over this summer, when was that? A few years back, I guess it's been a few years now, Mum um, received uh, an, a message or my Facebook page that was from Anne Laurel Carter and it said, hey, I'm an author, um, uh, some children's books, I write novels, or, and I would love to meet Stella and maybe write a book about her. And Mom and I were like, whoa, what do you mean? That's so cool. Um, so then Anne, she actually summers just down the road from, from our home and she's she was on the river as well. And she came over for, for a cup of tea and we just we just talked about school. We talked about my life. We've been got into some of the project stuff, super casual. Um, we just had fun with it. And uh, when she moved back to Toronto for the for the winters, um, we would have FaceTime calls and we just talk about whatever and whenever and then what else was going on in my advocacy life and it became a book. Um, it's it's really cool because she's written it from my perspective and when I was proofreading it I was like Anne how did you do that that sounds like something I would say that's something I say that's a, that's an expression I use and she really really captured me um, and I think that it's just so cool and the book is actually in all grade seven classrooms in Nova Scotia it's it's really cool to know that I'm part of the empowerment unit and that hopefully when when youth when girls and young children read or hear about me, hopefully they, they find that spark in them that drives them to create change. Our everyday kind of lifestyle. Um, well, I'm a university student, so trips to the grocery store is pretty frequent. Um, I need my snacks. I always take my reusable, my reusable bags. I think that's just one small step in the right direction to not having you know, something you throw away every time. Um, you go to the grocery store. I think if we all collectively changed one little thing about our lives to be more sustainable, it would make such a huge impact. I mean, we already see that with with not using uh, single-use plastic bags. You know, everybody has to take a, a grocery bag at the grocery store, or they have to put everything in their cart and throw it in the car. It's just it just makes sense now. You get to the grocery store, you take your bags in, and I think if we all collectively found a few more things see garbage on the side of the road, you just pick it up and throw it out in the trash can. Um, little things will go a long way for sure.